Visit sayright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Okay, we just purchased this uh, cord-free teardown window shade, uh, and we're gonna use the hardware. The fabric on it, in my opinion, is pretty much junk. So um, I'm going to tear off the fabric. Let's open it up and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We will be using the hardware from that roller shade, but we will replace the fabric with a nicer decorative fabric from Sayerite. We will show you the required steps to accomplish that task. This shade will be installed in the bathroom of our RV restoration project. The first step is measuring for the shade. To measure for this shade, you can have it stop anywhere you like. As you can see, we're only about an inch away from the wall on that side. And usually it's just an inch on this side, but I think I'm gonna have mine go all the way to 36 inches, which would be right here. So we'll have this covered with the shade. I think that'll look good. It's up to you how you wanna do it. And then for the height, we need at least 24 inches for the height. Then we're gonna add seven inches more to have uh, excess fabric on the roller and enough for a sleeve at the bottom, which we'll talk about later on. We will be using a decorative fabric called Battleline Elos. This is a woven fabric that does provide some privacy. You can see a little bit of light diffusing through. Here's a shot early in the morning. I'm waving from inside. You may be able to see that. This is still the early morning hours, so here's a view inside. You cannot see through at all because the light inside is brighter than the light outside. For a total privacy, pick a blackout fabric, or sometimes referred to as privacy fabric. You can find it at the Sayrite website. Click on Fabric and then click on Fabric Special Features and click on Blackout. We need a finished shade that is 36 by 24. So I'm going to run um, the 36 across the width of the fabric and the 24 we need to add uh, for excess fabric, 7 inches that will be used uh, as excess around the roll and one and three quarter inches for a hem at the bottom. So it will be cut to 32 by three quarter inch and that's the height. The width will be exactly what we desire at 36. We do not add any hems or anything to the sides because it would roll up inconsistently if we added hems to the sides. So that's why it's the same. Using those calculations, we'll now mark our fabric to size. So we're using a T-square here and this is the edge from the factory which is straight and this is the edge that was cut at Sayerite. So we're going to mark a line here to make sure that we have a straight edge. This is 32 and 3 quarter which is right here. We're going to mark there and then we'll measure over here as well and we'll strike a line between mark to mark. Once our lines are struck on our fabric at the appropriate spot, it's now time to check that our fabric is perfectly square. Now we want to check to make sure that uh, this is a perfect rectangle. And to do that, we're going to measure from corner to corner. Uh, 48 and a half inches is that one, and this one should be the same. If it's not, we'll make modifications. 48 and a half. It's perfect. So I'm going to put a W here. This is chalk and it usually comes off uh, with a wet rag. That's the width, so I don't get confused. Depending on the fabric, some cut edges may unravel. So in this chapter, we're going to show you how to cut the fabric to avoid that. This is the top edge and it will be on the roller shade. We can use scissors to cut it. That is the bottom edge over here. On this bottom edge, it's going to have a double hem with a sleeve for the slat. This edge needs to be hot knifed because if we cut it with scissors, it may unravel and we can't create a hem here as we discussed earlier. This edge is the factory edge and it looks like it's been sealed. So I'm going to insert the tempered cutting glass underneath this edge and we'll use a hot knife. Okay, we're going to use the Sayerite Edge hot knife. This is the cordless version. We also have a corded version that's less expensive. And what you want to do is you want to cut the fabric and uh, basically separate it while you're cutting it because you don't want to have burnt edges. So notice how I'm pulling on the fabric as I cut and I'm going fairly quickly here and cutting on top of that glass makes the heat transfer directly to the fabric and makes it for a nice smooth and straight cut. When I get to the end edge of the glass I'll just move the glass down the way and continue to the other end. 
This is the top edge, so we don't have to worry about using a hot knife here. Uh, it should never be unrolled to the point where it's ever visible, so I'm using scissors. Same thing with the bottom edge. We're going to cut it with scissors because there's going to be a double hem here with a sleeve for the slat. Now we're going to remove the fabric from our cordless roller shade and use the hardware. Okay, we just purchased this uh, cord-free tear-down window shade uh, and we're going to use the hardware. The fabric on it, in my opinion, is pretty much junk. So um, I'm going to tear off the fabric. Let's open it up and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So this comes with the slat and it also comes with the hardware to hang it. Uh, if Some of them don't come with the hardware and you have to buy that separately. This is available at pretty good department stores or online, but not at Sarite.com yet. So I'm going to take the fabric and I'm going to unroll it all the way to the, uh, to the hardware. Okay, so right there. So before we take the fabric off, uh, I'm going to mark on the fabric with an arrow and then I'm going to basically put a line there and mark an arrow here on the actual uh, frame so I know which way the fabric has to roll. It has to roll like this. Now I am going to throw out this fabric, but I'm going to keep it uh, so I don't get confused about how it rolled onto here. And all it does is just peel right off here. There's a double-sided tape on it. This one has uh, spacers that are put on it. Some of them don't have that. So I'm going to cut these off. If yours may not have this and what the best way to do it is just to take a razor blade like this and cut down the spacers and then they should just roll off like, like this. Comes off pretty easy once you get it started. There we go, and throw this away. We need to create a sleeve on the bottom edge of our fabric for the insertion of the slat. We're gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, the W, the W is here, so this is our width. We're gonna call that the top. We're gonna to call this the bottom. At the bottom, we're gonna take the clear acrylic ruler and we're gonna create a half inch hem first. So I'm gonna mark up one inch with my chalk uh, pencil here and then we'll fold to that point. And we're gonna use double-sided tape. You don't have to use double-sided tape. You could use pins or you can use wonder clips, but I just like to stick everything in place. So I'm gonna use this double-sided tape and we're also gonna be using the double-sided tape for the actual hardware, the rod that we uh, removed the fabric from. So this is an uh, application where you're gonna need this kind of double-sided tape to get your new fabric on the hardware. We'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then I just start to baste at the center, and I work to my left, and then I work to my right. Here you can work from your right to your left if you'd like. And we're going to fold right on top of that line, as you can see, and push down on the fabric, and it stays in place nicely and creates a beautiful half-inch hem. Okay, we're going to take our, our uh, slat here, and what I like to do is I like to fold it over and basically have it so that the half inch hem is almost on top of that. And then I'm just going to mark it here. That way we know it's going to fit in here and we'll probably be sewing it right about here. Um, so I'm going to measure up to that point and I'm going to strike a new line to where we fold there. So that is right there on the clear acrylic ruler and I've got it parallel to this edge. So we're going to strike a line here. This measurement is two and five eighths from here to the uh, folded edge of that half inch hem that we made, just so you know. I'm going to take my double sided tape and I'm going to place it right on top of that half inch hem, keeping it about an, an eighth inch or so away from the folded edge because we don't want this double sided tape to show up. This double sided tape is an acrylic glue, it's not a rubber based glue. So it's highly recommended for upholstery applications. Uh, other double-sided tapes will yellow in the sun or seep a lot. This tape is just perfect for it and it's only really available from Sarite. We have the best quality basting tapes for upholstery applications. Fold to that line. Okay, so we're gonna position it right about here so it's on the inside of that presser foot. Now I'm gonna put a magnetic guide 
here to make sure that I can uh, guide it. You don't need the magnetic guide, but it is helpful. All right, so we have it positioned exactly where we want it. We're gonna lower our foot, and I'm sewing a six millimeter straight stitch, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. This is gonna be visible, so we wanna make it nice. And then we'll just sew across here. At the end, we're gonna do a little bit of reversing here. And that should do it. So now we can open up that sleeve and insert our slat. And it fits fairly snugly, which is what we wanted. And if it needs to be cut to size, we can do that. So we can make sure that this doesn't come out either by hand sewing or you can use this micro basting tacking gun and put a tack that's uh, it's a little bit visible, but it, it's barely visible. That way it won't come out. Now we can take that decorative fabric and install it on our roller hardware. Okay, this hardware is adjustable. As you can see, I can make it pretty small or I can make it fairly large. It does have a maximum length. I don't know what it is for this one, but we just need it to uh, be about an eighth inch wider than our fabric. So you can see here that the, the fabric will basically come to here. And on this side, it's exactly the same. So we know that the uh, width of this is correct. Now we're gonna take our double-sided tape that we used previously, and we're gonna apply it on, this is the, the tape that comes from the manufacturer and it stops right here. That's why we need it here. So we're gonna basically put this in line with that tape. And I actually like to run this tape over top of the manufactured tape because it sticks really well. And then I'll just break it and we'll peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue. I'm going to take the shade and I'm going to roll it over here. This is our top edge. There's our W that we marked so we wouldn't get confused. And here is our arrow. So we want this to roll this direction. So our fabric will basically be on like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to position this down and make sure that it's got an eighth inch on each side, which it does. So here's my double-sided tape and I've positioned it so that I can basically take this rod and I can roll it back and it'll stick to the fabric. So I want this to be uh, parallel with the hardware, this edge. And you can see it's a little bit off here. So I'm gonna move it over here so that I'm siding it and I can see that it's, it's got the same amount of fabric here as it does here. So it goes on nice and straight. I have an eighth inch overhanging here and I have about an eighth inch overhanging here. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to now take my, uh, my rod and I'm gonna roll it back, which will stick it to the fabric. Push down, push down. And then, okay, so my double-sided tape is exposed. So I need to, do, to move it a little bit further down the shade. Because you don't want the double-sided tape to be exposed there, you'd like it to be covered. So I'm gonna move it down a little bit more to here, making sure that it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna roll it back here. There we go. Now I can stick it down with my fingers once it's in position. Like that. Notice the arrow is pointing down. See how it rolls same direction that it was? That's important. So we're going to roll all the way to the bottom and it looks like it's, gonna, it's going on a little bit crooked. So we can actually push on this to straighten it out a little bit. We want the two ends to be pretty much even. So here's what it should look like in the end. Uh, you may have to push on it to get it to, to be nice and straight. And if it goes on really crooked, you might have to rebaste it, but ours is good. Now it doesn't matter if this uh, is up which it will be in our situation. This will be facing inside the room and this will be outside. Um, you can actually position it any way you want because this fabric is totally reversible, but this is good. So this is, I'm the window back here and this is the exterior part. 
Next, we'll install the brackets, then we're gonna show you how to tension the spring within the roller. Okay, we mounted this hardware on this side, right where we want the shade to stop. Then I'm gonna put the end of the shade on this bracket, and for the other mounting of the other side, I'm going to mark where it goes with a pencil. And now we're ready to install the shade. So we're gonna roll this up and leave about, um, well, I'm gonna actually go all the way to the top because I like it tensioned nice. And then I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put this finger into that slot. You gotta make sure the finger is actually in the slot so it holds tight. Okay, so once it's in there, I'm gonna pull this down very close to the top of the shade. And then I'm gonna take the finger out and I'll roll the shade up because now the spring is under tension. So let's roll it all the way up. And you can adjust this until you get the amount of tension that you want in doing that. So now we're gonna put it back in again. Repeating these steps a second or even third time in smaller increments may be required. It just depends on how much you want the spring tensioned. Okay, so now, as you can see, the shade is under some tension. Is it enough to pull it up easily? Yes, it is actually. Coming up next is the materials and the tools list that we use to make this shade. There are multiple fabrics that you can choose from the Sayrite website to make a shade like this. We did not use a blackout fabric for this application, but you can if you'd like. If you have any questions about the fabrics or supplies, give us a call. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.